What's going on everybody, it's Patrick Dunn here. Welcome to The Parallax. And today we're gonna to be talking about my top three NFT games that are set to explode. Now, I'll be honest, there's a lot of junk coming out in the NFT space, especially in gaming. So I kind of did the homework for you guys and I'm gonna show you some projects that I'm looking into. And you wanna make sure you watch these videos until the end because these projects aren't even out yet, right? There's no game to play quite yet. And by getting into these games early, you have an opportunity to get in before other people do. Now, before we go ahead and get started, make sure to give this video a like, subscribe, and turn on notifications and let's go ahead and dive in. So the first game we're going to talk about is going to be Cypher. Actually, when I first heard about this project, I first got interested in it from the art. It's pretty interesting. It's like the Shiba Inu. But over the couple of months, as the project began to evolve and mature and raise funding, it became so much more than a picture profile project. And now it's going to be like a full on fledged game where there's a bunch of NFTs, a bunch of tokens. You know, they're launching a token at the moment right now. So you can invest by getting into the token. But to give you an idea of what Cypher is all about, it's a play to earn game where you're essentially, you know, two different modes. You can play against other players, you fight against each other, and you also play against everybody, meaning like you kill monsters, raid dungeons and things like that. And to quickly explain what play to earn is, is essentially when you play a game, you earn money in the game or you earn something in the game, and then you can actually cash it out for real world money. So for Cypher, what makes it so interesting is that instead of creating a game where people just grind mindlessly and try to make money like as a job playing this game, they're actually trying to make it fun, make it a little bit more casual for the everyday person to get that mainstream adoption. So not only can you make money playing the game, but also it's a fun game that you would play even if you weren't making money doing it. And that's the proposition of Cypher has communicated to the world. When we're looking at the art itself, I find really impressive is that originally when I first saw this project, it was like these 2D characters, which are very detailed and a lot of NFT projects aren't this detailed. So, you know, I like that aspect of it, but because it's going to be a game, you have to make it 3D, right? Otherwise, you know, people aren't going to play it. You can see from this trailer, very good 3D models, especially for a NFT like blockchain kind of game. You look at these models, these characters will be characters that you would see in a regular game, even if it was outside of blockchain. And the thing I see about blockchain games is that usually Usually the graphics and the gameplay and everything isn't really that good but people buy into it because it's just an NFT project or a crypto game. I can see they're really trying to put in the effort to just be a good game first that happens to have play to earn in it. So the models are really strong. The weapons are strong. Look at the detail on that. The land that you could probably buy in the future looking pretty good. And, you know, obviously the models are very nice as well. So art very, very strong for a NFT project or a crypto gaming project that is. So let's go ahead and talk about the team. So the team over here, we have Tin, who is the world architect, AKA the founder or co-founder and you have other co-founders and the entire team, as you can see, is clearly doxxed. So they're all showing their real faces. It's not like anonymous person. So it's not like you have to worry about this team just disappearing with your money because everybody knows who they are. They run real businesses outside of doing crypto by doing anything shady in the crypto space. It's going to hurt their brands and businesses outside of crypto. So obviously they are incentivized not to do that. And everyone's doxxed from the 3D artists to the 3D animators all the way to the founder. So that's always a good plus in my book. And when we look at the careers page, you know, I know that they're hiring a lot Lot, a lot of people because I've talked to some people that actually work there and as you can see on the career page they're just hiring like crazy so so as you can see they actually raised millions of dollars in funding right so 6.8 million in seed round from you know VCs I know they've raised like millions of dollars from selling their NFTs and their tokens probably have raised more than I think 20 million at this point to build out this game so as you can see Saphir and Surge they launched the 10,000 NFT characters which is I guess like crowdsource funding then they launched the Nikos which is the sexy cats that you saw earlier. And then they're going to have the flash, which is another set of entities. So they're raising a lot of money. Granted, they're hiring so many people and they're building all these 3D models. So, you know, it's fair, right? It's not like they're just raising money just to take your money. They're doing another Cypher Brew. So they have more playable characters. They're gearing up for this to be like a very large game. And this is January to March 2022. So quarter one, they are going to have demo of the PVE Cypher token sale, which is already out. PVP is coming out on this time. They're selling land in the future and then on and on. I mean, they have a lot of stuff like comic books and things like that, but this is so far in the future. Overall, they're launching a lot of products, they're building quite a bit, and they're promising a very strong game. So granted, there are, you know, demos and models that they've been teasing out a little bit, but there's no game you can actually play. It's going to be available sometime in 2022. And so there are two ways to actually invest into Cypher. That is purchasing the token, which is kind of like the money in their economy. Second is to purchase NFTs. They're going to have different tiers of NFTs, and they're going to be at different prices. Personally, I have a couple of them myself. So if that's something you're interested in looking into, definitely check them out.
So the next game that we are going to talk about is Big Time. Now, this game I'm actually pretty excited for. It's kind of like World of Warcraft, but for the crypto blockchain kind of space. You know, if you go on the website, Big Time is going to be multiplayer RPG, kind of like World of Warcraft, like I was saying. You're going to collect a bunch of stuff that you can sell as NFTs. Again, it's a play to earn model. What I really like to do is I look at the team who is building it, right? Because in the beginning of these projects, there's not really much things you can look at. You can look at the art, okay, but there's not really much gameplay. So you have to believe in the team when you're investing in a project. So the CEO of this project is actually actually the founder of Decentraland, which is one of the most successful NMT projects to date. And so that's very good, right? Because this guy has a lot of connections and experience. So if you just look at the people who are behind this project, it's stacked with like triple A developers and, you know, people who've been involved in the gaming space for a long time. So CTOs from Fortnite, Gears of War, Medal of Honor, CPO is going to be Pioneer MMO. We used to work at EA and Zanga. Art Director, God of War, Ratchet and Clank, World of Warcraft, very stacked team. They had successful projects in the past, very successful projects in the past, I might add. So there's a high chance that this project will probably succeed in the future. You no know, guarantees, but obviously team is great. So we had to understand the concepts like World of Warcraft, but you know, their own kind of version of it, actually adventure RPG. There's a Time Warrior, Chronomancer, Shadowblade, Quantum Fixers, right? If you kind of understand gaming, you know, this is the healer, this is the assassin, this is the mage, this is the warrior, right? It's very classic gaming roles. So art's pretty strong. It's kind of like this polygon style. And that's good because it's going to be easy for a lot of people to play it on their computers if they don't have the latest specs. That's always something you got to watch out for. If a game has like these insane graphics, can a regular person play it. I think people can probably run this on like pretty much any computer, which is great. So at the moment, there are two ways to kind of buy into this project. The first one is to buy these founder passes, not really founders passes, but like VIP access, which I have one myself where you're going to get access to the game early. It's not quite investing in like an NFT asset. I think it's more of like a game pass. Can these be more valuable in the future? It's kind of unclear. Just think of it like a ticket to get in the game. Now, the other way to invest is really with the token, right? And so what's really interesting about this token is that they're creating a token and they're going to create a lot of value in this token. It's going to be used in the game and I'm sure they're going to create a lot of aspects to it. The most interesting part of the tokenomics if you're really curious, is that there will be no initial offering or pre-sale of a token to anyone, including the founders, including the development team. The token will be 100% community driven. The primary way to acquire tokens will be to play the game. Now, this is super interesting because normally in the past, when someone has an NFT project, they'll just like create a token, hoard a bunch of it themselves as the founders, sell it to the public. And then over time, they'll start selling their tokens to the public. And that's how they make their millions of dollars. What Big Time is doing is very different. Instead of holding tokens and selling it later and cashing out, they are invested in the game and making it a success. So as the economy grows, the founders are going to be rewarded. So the main ways to actually create tokens is not to create out of thin air but to actually play the game. Because in the future, it's not about the developers making the most money. It's about the community growing as a whole. And so by setting it so that the players are the ones that are actually earning the majority of the tokens, it's community driven. And that's going to lead to the more long term success for everybody. So I really appreciate that because the founders could have just hoarded a bunch of tokens for themselves, but instead they want to give it back to the community and they want to make it fair for the people that actually play the game. So the next game that we are going to be talking about is Ember Sword. What makes it really interesting is that you can actually play on your browser. So it's not like a game that you have to install in your computer and you have to have like the craziest specs. So if you think about play to earn, right, you got to think like, who are the people who might actually transition into playing video games for a living to make money? It's going to be people probably in developing countries where instead of working at a restaurant, they could play a game instead and make more money and have more fun. So in that situation, the more accessible the games are, like if it's available on mobile or browser, the more people will play and the more it will be adopted. And so if you invest early, then you know you have a better chance of success. So let's go ahead and talk about this game. First of all, when we're looking at the art, also very good. It's kind of similar to Big Time where they have that polygon style. I, I forget what exactly this is called, but it looks pretty solid. It's like an MMORPG where you walk around, you do quests, you fight monsters, you play with your friends. And a really important thing to understand is that Ember Sword is going to be free to play. So meaning anybody can come in play and enjoy the game. So that makes it more accessible for everybody. Like I always say, when a team is docs, that's amazing because they really put their reputation on the line. I actually already went through a lot of these people's LinkedIn. A lot of them have been in the gaming space for a long, long, long time. So we're talking like you got veterans 
putting this game together. And also they've been building this game for a long time. So it's not just like crypto became hot. They're like, oh, let's do an NFT game. They've been building this game for years. So MMOs are very difficult to make in general. And just the fact that they were building it before the hype of NFT in 2022 is amazing. So I would say the most interesting dynamic of this project is their land sale. So when you think about a game, there's different areas within a game. All of this can be sold as land in Ember Source. So the first one is plots of land, right? So like when you're walking around killing monsters, you're on a plot of land. So you can own that piece of land. It's not just a random piece of land you're walking on. Somebody owns it. There are settlements, there are towns, there are cities. Imagine like a world where you go into the city, you want to do quests, you want to buy a new sword, you want to buy new items. Well, somebody owns that land that you're walking on. And so by buying this land, what happens is the landowner get a tax, meaning they get a cut of the revenue that is spent on the land. So if you think about World of Warcraft, anytime you use your gold to buy something or any game like that, it's kind of like you send the gold and then the gold goes to the shop and then you get the item and then there's no really benefit to the land owner because nobody owns the land. I guess Blizzard will own the land. But in this situation, regular players and people that buy the land can own a piece of that world. So imagine if you were playing this game, you own the town and every time somebody goes into town and they buy an item, you get a cut of it. So why this is so interesting is that it's like a whole new way. It's like you can be a digital real estate owner within a game. Just like going down, buying property on the beach because you know that people are going to vacation there and so it's valuable. You can rent it out and stuff like that. This literally the same thing is happening in the virtual world and Ember Sword, I think, is doing a really good job when it comes to selling land and incentivizing people to buy it because of a possibility of earning a return on investment in land, which is amazing. And so with that said, those are going to be the top three games that I am currently looking at. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like, subscribe, and turn on notifications because we are a new channel. We're going to be coming in hot with new videos every week. And if you want to be up to date with all the latest NFT news, make sure to follow me on Twitter. With that said, my name is Patrick Dang. This has been The Parallax, and I'll see you guys in the next one.